So at the beginning of reactivity, we're going to start looking at Lewis bases reacting with Lewis acids like we did at the end of structure and reactivity. So remember that a base with a lone pair will be attracted to a Lewis acid that has a positive or a partial positive. And we draw our curved arrows always originating from the lone pair going towards the positive. And we end up with a base Lewis acid complex. We're going to start calling these Lewis bases nucleophiles and find that they react with electrophiles. So let's start looking at structures in organic chemistry that can react as electrophiles and structures that can react as nucleophiles. So we're going to define electrophiles in this class as an atom with a pi bond, either a double or a triple bond, to a more electronegative atom. So as we start to go through some of these, here's a carbon double bonded to the more electronegative oxygen. So this will be an electrophile. Similarly, the sulfur double bonded to the oxygen. Oxygen is more electronegative. Carbon double bonded to the nitrogen. This is a good electrophile. Here's one with a triple bond, but it's still a pi bond, a more electronegative atom. And here's our aldehyde of glucose. So we can see this in biomolecules as well, still an electrophile. So then we get a couple things, a couple little um, other pieces. This is ATP. Some molecules have more than one electrophile. So we can see in different settings that each of these phosphorus atoms could react as an electrophile. Or in this structure, the aldehyde carbon or the carbon of the ester could be an electrophile. And then this third case that I want you to be careful on, is even if there's an atom with a positive charge, the atom with the pi bond to the more electronegative atom is the electrophile. So the nitrogen is not the electrophile. The carbon double bonded to that nitrogen is my uh, electrophile. And similarly, in these carbonyls that have been protonated, these carbons in red are the electrophiles. So then we need to be able to recognize the nucleophiles. And nucleophiles are Lewis bases. And Lewis bases must have a lone pair of electrons to donate. So in this one, you can see I already drew it with the, it's got a minus charge and the carbon has a lone pair on it. So that's easy to pick out. Sometimes it's not drawn with the lone pair, but remember a carbon with a minus charge is usually a carbon with three bonds and a lone pair because our valence is four minus three bonds minus the two. So this minus is really a carbon with a lone pair. So this carbon right here. Sometimes the nucleophiles are neutral. They do not have to have a negative charge. So here we can see the nitrogen of an amine is a nucleophile, or the oxygen of an alcohol has, a lone, has two lone pairs and can be a nucleophile. And then the third thing to look for is some nucleophiles are ionic, like we saw up here, but some of them are partially ionic. So the way that it's drawn it may have a bond or drawn to look like it has a bond. So if we look at this carbon, we can, um, this has probably got a dative bond, um, but it's highly polarized and we can really think of that carbon as a carbanion bonded to the magnesium. So this carbon right here is my nu nucleophile with that lone pair. Similarly, this carbon bonded to the lithium, this is a nucleophile. And we can picture those lone pair, the two electrons in that carbon-lithium bond really residing on the carbon where the lithium is almost positive. And in this case, this is a really the sulfur with a three lone pairs and a minus charge. This is really an ionic bond, but we often draw it like this.
So you want to look for those alkali earth metals and alkaline earth metals because they're often next to an atom, a sulfur, an oxygen, a carbon that can act as a nucleophile. And once we can pick out the nucleophiles and the electrophiles, we can start to predict reactivity in organic chemistry.